Hello, people in TV land. We are in the Laban lab. It's a Laban Bertenyev class. I have a few people in my Zoom room. If you ever want to be in the Zoom room, reach out to me because that is possible. Or you can go to my website at lauravward.com. Um, so today we're going to work really with, with space. Again, it is like my favorite thing in the world, geometric space. And we're going to break it down bit by bit and then try and be more specific in our space. And then we'll get into the bigger, the bigger things. So do I want to raise the, mm, this is fine. Okay, okay. I was thinking of raising up my camera, but I'm not going to. So we're gonna start with the dimensions. Oh, and there's Zazen on the floor, starring himself. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with just the pure dimensions. So obviously it, this, is, this is the dimensions in movement analysis, which, are very much aligned with the dimensions that we all know. But when we're moving, clearly I am a three-dimensional being, but we're using this just for this language for the sake of this system, this Laban space theory, that up straight up and down is the vertical dimension. So I'm gonna go with my left, my left hand, it'll be your right, straight up and down. And so we're just finding the vertical dimension. This on top is place high and down here, place low. And I suggest that as you learn this is that you start to create the space in your head. So you're mapping it out, just saying it like place high and place low. If once you can say things, it just integrates them more. Place high, place low. Switching into the other side, it's still place high and place low because we're talking about the space. Place high, place low, place high. This is the vertical dimension. The vertical dimension is a single dimension with two directions. So the two directions are up and down, place high and place low. Let's go to the horizontal dimension. So think of the horizontal dimension like a line from side to side, and we're gonna cross it over and then we're gonna open wide. So here's a big thing. We wanna try to keep our headlights, hip bones facing front. So as I cross, I'm not twisting, I'm staying headlights facing front and open, or I'm not turning my body so that something else becomes front. I'm trying to keep this front crossing and open. So this would be side across and side open, side across and side open, which would be right side and left side, side across and side open. Let's switch it to the other side of the body. So crossing over and opening wide, side across, side open, trying to keep the hips square to the front, side across and side open and side across and side open. So that's the horizontal dimension. One dimension, two directions. Now sagittal is backwards and forwards. Think of it like Sagittarius, like the archer, boom. You wanna shoot straight right in front of you. My little Cato is exactly in the middle of my sagittal but we'll see, maybe he'll move, maybe he won't. So I'm going to do it with my left hand, it'll probably be your right hand, right forward middle, right back middle, right forward middle. Sorry, it's not right, it's just for, I'm just doing right hand. So this is just forward middle, backward middle. This is the sagittal dimension, forward middle, backward middle. It's a line with a point in front and a point behind. If I do the thing on the other side, backward middle, forward middle. So this is just backward middle and forward middle, backward middle. He loves it. He loves being down there and being like the center of my, <laughs> he doesn't care at all. And forward middle. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to just relocate him. First, I'll give you the, the cutest view. <laughs> Look at the noodle buddy. He just doesn't care but this is where he normally sits. Okay, then I'm gonna show you the octahedron. So this is all movement in the octahedron. And I've shown you guys this before, but I feel like the more we layer it in, the easier it is. So here's the up down is the vertical, the side to side is the horizontal, and the sagittal is the forward to back. So the octahedron has six points and eight sides and it's a platonic solid. Every angle is the same, every face is the same. So this movement, if we put the whole scale together, is gonna to go up, down, oops, up, down, cross, open, backwards, forwards. So we are gonna put the whole thing together. It's called the dimensional cross of axes. 
A-X-E-S is the plural of axis. <laughs> like, I've studied this stuff and I still sometimes have to look these things up and go, is it axis or axes? Axes, plural of axis. So we're gonna go place high and place low, vertical. Same arm, side across, side open, horizontal. Backwards and forwards, sagittal. Let's do that side two more times. Place high, place low, vertical. Side across, side open, horizontal. Backwards and forwards, sagittal. So my other hand is sometimes working as a counterbalance. Sometimes it's not doing anything, but sometimes it's working as a counterbalance. Place high, place low. Here's a counterbalance, side across, side open. And here's a counterbalance. As my, this arm goes back, my other one's going forward, backward and forward. Let's switch it to the other side. Place high, place low. Side across, side open. Taking it backwards and forwards. And the way that I'm doing this right now is with all central pathways. I'm always going to the center. It doesn't have to be that way. Vertical up, place high, place low. Horizontal, side across, side open. Sagittal, backwards and forwards. And from the shape flow class that I just taught, which if you look at the role play from today, I talk about shape, the shape aspect of Laban, which is how we're relating to the environment. So this would be directional shape. I'm spoking out, I'm spoking out, or I'm arcing. Let's do it one more time on that side, spoking, and then we'll switch it to arcing. So we're gonna hit place high, place low, side across. So we're moving from the center out. So this is central, a central pathway. All right, and this is just extra stuff. Pathways and tensions are extra things to learn. So we're gonna do it with peripheral ones. So we're gonna go place high and we're gonna slice forward to place low. We're gonna come through center, uh, stab across and then slice and open it out. Keep opening it out all the way behind you. And then we're gonna stab forward. So this is with central and peripheral pathways and tensions. So we're going central up, we're going peripheral all the way down. We're coming through center, central out, we're slicing out around the edge, peripheral, keep going peripheral all the way to the back, and we're gonna come central through the center. Let's try it on the other side. So, I mean, we can think like, oh, you know, is this the way the movement goes or is the movement going like this or, is it doing that, right? Which is totally different. So this is one way that we can look at people's movement and say like, it's very direct, it's very indirect, it's central, it's coming from the center to the edge. Like, I'm gonna shake your hand, my arm spokes out and then it arcs up and down. We shake hands, we make a bridge between us. Or I hug you and I fully shape around you. And it's like a much deeper integrated relationship. All right, so central, straight up. Peripheral slicing down, central crossing over, peripheral opening, 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 taking it all the way around to the back and then stabbing through, boom. Yeah, let's do it one more time. Place high, slicing down to place low, stabbing across, slicing open, keep slicing all the way to the back and then stab forward. Yeah, so that is like just a few different ways that we could do that scale. And it also sort of helps make sense of things like when we do attach effort to this, why this is direct and this is indirect, which if that doesn't mean anything to you right now, let it go. And let's do what Terry's doing and just take a forward fold and shift from side to side, let it go. Let your body soften, bring the torso online, relax your glutes and hamstrings, bend your knees, easy and loose. Ah, and then come up whenever you're ready and just shake it out and give it a bounce. And let's just take a walk around the room to let that information settle into our bodies. So like, 
if I'm teaching a class and then I see, oh, people are doing something in their body, I go, oh, maybe they need that. Let me try it on and see if I need it too. So just one way of thinking about teaching, and I know a lot of people watching these videos are also movement teachers, or being in my room are also movement teachers. Like use what's happening to inform the class. Uh, and, and then also give people time to process because this material or any material can take a while. And I feel like it's the thing, this is our moment of talking about how the world is compared like, and how this can valuable in the world, the way that life is these days, very few people have time to process what's going on, right? It's like one thing gets packed in, then the next thing's packed in, then the next thing's packed in, the next thing's, maybe you had a walk for 10 minutes from here to there, or you drove your car, maybe some processing happened, maybe it happened at night, but usually we're, we're just taking in information all the time on our phones, TV, relationships. It's a very fast world. So letting some of that stuff land just by taking a walk around where there's no extra pressure to learn anything or sitting down, just giving yourself time. I was teaching at a ballet school, a kid's ballet school, and I was teaching them like a, a lot of dance making stuff. And I was asking them, when do you have time to process your day? And all of them were just packed chock-a-block all day. They're like in the shower. So like, you know, these little kids who need time to process, like if we want to learn and take things in in a healthy way, we have to have some of that processing time. Okay, now we've processed enough. <laughs> I'm selling you on processing, falling over. <laughs> We're going to work with uh, the planes. So let me just use a, my, my tools at hand. We could think of this pen, it's up and down, is in the vertical dimension. It's a single dimension. Here's the horizontal dimension. Here's the savage dimension, right? It's one long line, two directions, one dimension. Here's a plane. It's like a sheet of paper. We have now, we have like, if this is the vertical dimension, there's my vertical, oh, sorry, if this is the vertical plane, I've got vertical as the dominant dimension and then horizontal as the secondary. In the horizontal plane, I've got horizontal as the dominant plane and sagittal as the secondary plane. In the sagittal plane, I've got sagittal as the dominant plane, a little bit of vertical in the secondary plane. So this is just to throw that out there. So when we're working in these planes, like when I'm in the vertical plane, my door plane, here I am actually in a door, I wanna be as flat as I can. And so right now we're just gonna hit the four points, right? So I'm hitting, but we're hitting them with two sides of our body. So I'm gonna go, I'll do the opposite for you. So this is high left, high right, low left, low right, high left, high right, low left, low right, door plane. Now, we're gonna just talk about how we can move, through, I'm gonna move forward how we can move through the door plane just using one side of our body. So we're gonna go high left. We're gonna stay as flat as we can. So I'm gonna take my hand from here and bring it down here. And I wanna take it through the middle. I'm gonna cross back. Am I gonna cross back? I could cross forward, I could cross back. The idea, it, let's just do it both ways so that it's always nice to have variety. High left crossing to low right. High left. For me to try and stay as flat as possible, actually uh, crossing back is making the most sense, but let's try it crossing front too. Try to stay sideways, cross front, high left to low right. So I'm trying to not go too far forward or backward. Like if I was on a balance beam this way, I wanna stay on my balance beam, whether I cross back or front. Yeah, let's try it on the other side. So we're going high right, crossing to low left, high right, crossing down to low left. I've crossed back and now I'm gonna try it crossing front. High right, crossing low left, high right, crossing low left. And we can feel how those two versions just require something a little different. Like if I cross back, I'm a little bit more spirally. If I cross front, it's a little more body half. This is a twist. This is this whole half coming forward. So those are just, just, we're just noticing these ways of being in those places. 
I can also hit the high point. So I'm gonna cross to high right. I'm crossing front and I'm gonna open down to low left. Crossing up, high right, opening down. And I'm trying to take out any forward backward in this. So I'm going as flat as I can right up to my side and then taking it down. Let's try the same thing on the other side. Actually, we did those all crossing front. Let's do the same thing crossing back. So crossing back and then opening down. Crossing back, opening down. Crossing back, opening down. So I feel like when we're doing this, if we go all the way to the icosahedron and do the scale where we're putting the three planes together, there are gonna be times when you cross front, times when you cross back, when you're in the vertical. Uh, but we'll check it out once we get there. You have a question? Okay. All right, so let's do it the other side. So we're gonna cross high and come down low. Crossing up high and coming down low. I have, there's a phone call that I have to answer. I'm just gonna pause the recording. Okay, <laughs> Back. yes, thank you. We are in crossing high. Let's cross front and then open down to the side. So we're going high left to low right. High left to low right. Now let's cross back. High left to low right. High left to low right. So what we wanna think, and I can kind of see it in my screen as I'm doing this, is that I am making this straight line from this point down to that point. Like if there was paint on my finger, the line would be a straight diagonal through the middle. It wouldn't kind of do this. It would be up there and then zoop down to there. So that's what we're aiming for. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but we're trying to get it as, as much of a line as possible. Is that helpful? Do you feel like this is making more sense of that for you, Mary? Cool. All right, so that was a lot of the vertical plane. Let's play with the horizontal plane. Um, so we're gonna take, we'll use both hands first. We'll start with our right, right forward middle, left forward middle, right back middle, left back middle. We're working in the table plane, right forward middle, left forward middle, right back middle, left back middle. So we wanna have more side side because horizontal is the dominant dimension in the horizontal plane. So this table isn't like a round table or even a square table. It's like a long rectangular table and the heads are at either end. So this is the dominant dimension and then forward backward is the secondary. So we're not gonna go quite as far forward backward as we go side side, but we're still going forward backward. If we think of these planes, kind of matching how our body is like vertical plane. I am, my body is longer than it is wide or it appears that way. Maybe not entirely depending on people's arm length and all that kind of stuff. And in the side side, like if I open side side I have more side sideness than forward backwardness. And in the sagittal, in the sagittal there's more sagittal than there is vertical. So it's mostly forward and backward in the plane. It doesn't express quite the same way in our body as the other two kind of work more easily, but whatever, we're putting a system on something. So all of this is a map, right? It isn't, we're, we're mapping out, we're creating an idea of something. It isn't the actual thing. Okay, let's go with crossing and opening. So we're gonna cross to left forward middle and we're gonna open Sorry, that was wrong. That was right forward middle to left back middle. Right forward middle to left back middle. I'm trying to keep my hips square to the front. Left back middle, right forward middle. Beautiful, left back middle. Let's do it on the other side. So this is going to be left forward middle to right back middle. Crossing in front, left forward middle to right back middle left forward middle to right back middle. Good. And now let's be open in front and cross in the back. So I'm gonna go left forward middle with the other side of my body crossing to right back middle. Left forward middle crossing to right back middle. Obviously it's gonna be easier to go here open than it is to go there back. That's just the nature of our bodies. And then maybe that's not obvious, but this is easier than that for most people. 
Let's go to the other side. So we're going to right forward middle to left back middle. And because of my camera, it might look like my arm's kind of going up. It should really be on the table plane. Right forward middle, left back middle. Right forward middle, left back middle, nice. So in your left back middle, you wanna really get that twist. So hips are facing, that's it. And if you actually look back to that corner, it'll make it easier. Or you look back to your imaginary corner. So when we add the head, we probably are gonna get more participation in the body. I wanna talk a little bit more about these, this particular plane, the horizontal plane, because I've been binge watching the behavior pa panel. <laughs> and they do like all of this like movement stuff, like when, with serial killers and political figures and people to, to talk about their movement patterns. And so one of the guys, Mark Bowden talks about the planes of expression. And it's like, they're using slightly different language, but it's the same idea. So he talks about this, like if I go around crotch level, I mean, this is the horizontal plane down here as I do that, right? This they call the grotesque plane. And you think about it, like if my gestures are down here, it's very different <laughs> than my gestures being somewhere else, right? So this is for people gesturing, like this is the grotesque plane. Yeah, anyway, this is the truth plane. Ha, huh. and, and in, in Laban, this is very much sharing and caring, Care, sharing, disseminating information, gathering in information, sharing and caring. Like to me, we can scatter it out, bring it in, but this is the truth plane in this behavior panel, Mark Bodden's stuff. And all of these guys are looking at how people move. Some of them are from a, like how to help people move better and get, it's anyway, I'm so addicted to it. Wait, what is it? What's, is it a show? Yeah, it's. It, I'll put a. Um, I'll put a card in this video. It's. It's on YouTube. It's the behavior oh, panel, cool. and it's cool. four guys that like come from the military, the police, like detectives, <laughs> like, and movement experts who are talking about people's movement, like when things get uncomfortable. And so, because it is my field, and I've also seen Laban movement analysts do this same work. Some of the the women. Uh, I feel like Karen Bradley and maybe Karen Studd, like a few of the women that I know have done this talking about political figures. And so what, what, when you're looking at somebody to see deception or something like that, you look at when the pattern changes in somebody's body. So you need to know what their baseline is like, right? If somebody does this, it doesn't necessarily mean they're lying or if they look around, like it, it, we can't say it's when a lot of factors happen then we go, oh, we need to look more at that. So that's why I've been watching this behavior. When you panel. did this, you look yeah. like a goddess. <laughs> you're down here you look like a creep right see yeah. you get it that's the grotesque plane it's instantly creepy like somebody gesturing around here it's like it's so it's very crotch level so it's like yeah okay that's maybe not where you want to gesture around here yeah i'm sharing with you oh welcome to my world justice the truth right now if i gesture up here around my eye level it's like the visionary plane like oh i can see this thing happen so, I mean, and, and in a weird that there's like a, a, to me, there's like a magic on the visionary plane. It's like, oh, what can happen? And plus, if we're talking about our body, I'm up here in my center of levity. There's this lightness and this air up here, right? There's possible, in, infinite possible potential up here in the visionary plane. We take it higher up here. And this is like inspirational. I'm talking to the heavens. I'm transcending. I'm sharing information with you. So it's really interesting just to see how the level changes of these plane of this horizontal plane. It's the same horizontal plane, whether I'm gesturing down here or through here or through here or through here. I'm opening into the, you know, but if I'm just going up, like then it's like transcendence. Oh, I see the gods. And if I'm just going down, it's like, okay, I'm grounding myself. I'm planting, I'm earthing. So it's just, I'm just sharing different ways that we can think about this stuff. We could also think of the horizontal as being very much like water will always settle to the horizon, right? Like water, if we put it anywhere, if we put it in a bucket, we can know the, we can find the plane of the horizon. So like, I think of this also as being, when we bring the fluids into the horizontal, it's like the, the water is like, we can move with the water. And if we, if we layer it with more systems, like the cups in tarot, which are about emotions and about the subconscious, like what's under the water? What do we not know that, that is happening in the system? 
so just layering more of this information, which is so fascinating to me. Um, yeah, and feeling it like even if I if I move here, like if my body's all closed and I'm moving here, but if I move here with my body also moving in the way, it's going to be very different, right? So like people want to uh, be able to influence other people with words or in my speech. Like I want to make sure that people see me. Like, oh, how do I be seen? Here, look, look, let's come into this, right? I'm going to bring you in. I'm inviting you in. And then I'm, where am I inviting you? I'm inviting you into myself, into my midline. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to share with you everything I know. I'm going to offer you all these good, wonderful things, right? Like you can feel how that hits you. So also if somebody's lying, their cadence and rhythm is not going to match their gestures. So uh, like... <laughs> I'm, I have a really hard time lying. I basically can't do it. If, if I ever lie, I will then in five seconds tell you the truth. So it's like terrible at deception, like horrible. It's like, I'm not even good with surprises, right? Like I'm gonna ruin the surprise. I'm gonna fuck it up. Like if it's gonna be a surprise party that I'm having for you, somehow you're gonna know ahead of time. Like I'm just not good at that. It's really funny. Anyway, just thinking about how we are in our bodies. Yeah, so also we can think of like, let's just stick with this horizontal plane a little bit longer because it's such a fascinating thing. Like we have in our cranium, so we have our, our dura mater and our pia mater. They're both protecting our brain. They're these big um, sheath-like uh, fascia, system, like uh, fascial sheaths that are protecting our brain. Inside, we also have our tentorum cerebelli, or is it, is it tentori cerebellum, one or the other, but it's basically this like, sort of tent-like continuation of the dura mater, which is separating the upper and the lower parts of our brain. Yeah. So if we think of that tentorum, it is a little bit of a, of a, a tent. So it's not totally flat horizontal, but we could think of that uh, relating to the horizontal plane or even like the top of our head relating to the horizontal plane. We can think of our diaphragm. We can think of it relating to the horizontal plane. In reality, it's on an incline, right? Because our ribs are up here and down to there. So it's really going kind of like that. And it's doming and dropping. So when we think of the horizontal plane in a human body, and we're thinking of these uh, fascial forms in our brain, our pelvic floor, it's maybe nice to think of them as being alive and having movement. So almost like if you saw a, a jellyfish in the water, like how that movement is like that. So that's sort of what's going on in our bodies. When we think of the horizontal plane in a living way in our tissue, and of course, all of this is approximation. These maps are not the real thing, but we're just thinking of it, bringing our awareness into these systems. Yeah, and how, so like if I'm affecting this fascial structure up here, we've moved totally into the body level of Laban, um, and, and then adding sort of some craniosacral ideas to it. I can pull on my ears sort of down and out, and I'm gonna pull on that tentorum, cerebelli, that little tent-like fascia in there. So when I'm starting to find this up here in my head, I can also start to find these like other areas where it's like, okay, there's a similar thing. I think that they do talk about there sort of being fascial structures in here. They're similar, but different, like, like a collar, but here for sure. And then here also, and we can also think of the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet as having those kind of doming. Yeah, so let's just move those for a second, moving those domes, right? We can move them down there in the grotesque plane. We can come up into the truth. If I'm pushing down with the truth, that might be different than having my hands open to the truth, get, you know, taking it just to feel and see how we notice these things. Huh, if I bring it up to my diaphragm, my breath, hmm. Yeah, so to throw one more piece in with, with these ideas that we're playing with, and this is something that I really love, and this is on the body level of Laban again, we, we often talk about this upper area as being the center of levity, the center of lightness, and then down here in our pelvis, the center of gravity, the center of, of groundedness, right? So if we want to ground ourselves, like we can't be grounded if our pelvis is pulled way up or like all weird, right? We need to let our pelvis sink to find ground, right? And then we can think of how is this relationship between the levity and the gravity? Like, can I breathe 
levity down to my center of gravity. Ha, ah, not so much. Like as soon as I start to breathe down there, I feel more gravity than levity, right? So I can breathe higher. I can go up more with my breath. Ah, I can take my breath down. So this is just a little more integration of that breath with space, with just up and down, right? Gravity, levity, which then we can take, let's just continue on this journey. Since we did a lot of horizontal, we're now taking these, this up and downness. We can think that going up, we're finding this levity, we're finding this lightness. Going down, we're finding this strength and groundedness. So even if I shift my breath with that, Hmm, coming down. I used to have one of my teachers always did this. This was one of her baseline moves of coming into her body. Always started here. Hmm, what's going on? We've got this up and down bounce, right? So I'm moving in my vertical dimension up and down to feel myself. Ah, here I am. It's interesting, like to think of what people do for their centering exercise. So for her, that was like always finding ground, finding center. And then we moved from there, but this was always the place to start. And it's interesting now that I'm talking about it and doing it, I'm noticing that um, connection to the earth. And I'm also seeing this uh, spiral coming out, which is this need to get out of the vertical, right? Like, oh, I've done enough vertical. Here's my recuperation. I'm just gonna shift from side to side. I'm gonna find this fluid, fluid, this fluid flow, maybe a figure eight sort of lemniscatic movement. Ha, ah, yeah. Ha, ah, so how are we doing? Should we stay with these types of ideas or should we get back into like the space space stuff? You, your choice, Laura, it's all wonderful. <laughs> okay. It's your choice. I'm, I'm not gonna move too much, but I'm, I'm really interested so I can watch. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so I'll just keep on going with this. Yeah. <laughs> right. So let's actually go to, cause we talked about this instead of doing more icosahedron, which we were going to get to, but now maybe we'll get to it right at the end. I want to play with, um, this idea of, of like center to edge, like spoking out into space. Like if I'm finding my kinosphere, I can center to edge all around, right? If I want to paint the entire inside of my kinosphere, I really, then I'm going to probably want to go center to edge and then periphery, moving some peripheral movement. And what I'd like you to just play with for yourself is feel the relationship in your torso as you make these spoke like forays out into the world. You're making these bridges and then feel what it's like when you get out there and you move in these peripheral patterns where you're just like painting the edges of your kinosphere. It could be even a near kinosphere. This doesn't have to be, you're going into your biggest, largest reach space. It could be very near close also. But feeling the difference of this peripheral movement to this central movement. And as you're feeling the difference in your body, start to notice the difference in your awareness. I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going all around. I am taking it all in, or I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going all around. So in a weird way, this is, this is space effort, direct space effort, boom, 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 or indirect space effort, taking it all in, ha, ah, looking at the whole thing. Right, and we could talk about like the rods and cones in our eyes back to the body level are responsible for different things. One is for more the periphery, also like night vision at night. We don't have that direct pinpointed vision without light. In the dark, we're sensing the periphery. We're sensing shapes. We don't need to know specifics. We need to know, is there something moving towards me over there in the darkness? So we have this peripheral access in bright light, boom, pinpointed access, much easier. We can also take in the whole surroundings, but we're not seeing that way. We're seeing more direct, even if we're taking it in. So it's just interesting how those rods and cones affect our eyes differently. And when we take in the space in different ways, boom, space effort, direct, right there, or indirect, hmm, global. I'm taking it all in. 
I walk into the theater, I look all around, I see, hmm, where, where is a good place for me? Is it there it is, I'm going there, right? So like, this is how in just daily life, we're using this space effort. So this is just a little kiss of effort with our big space, geometric space to space effort, which is talking about how the dynamic quality of my attention to the spaces, right? So that's just another thing, which with the weight, it is affined with the vertical. I have lightweight has a tendency to rise, strong weight has a tendency to come down. Doesn't have to, could be different, but that's how those things are interrelated. And then with space, direct space, an indirect space are fine with the horizontal, right? So I boom, and then I check it all out. I go right there, then I see the whole thing. So it doesn't have to be this that I'm crossing always to be direct, and then I'm opening to be indirect. But in this movement, if I'm crossing and I look right at my hand, boom, I'm going right there. And then as I check it out, I open it up, I'm checking it all out. So that's the affinity of space effort with the horizontal dimension. So this is just another sort of small little bite into how these things work. And what I feel like is so important is that people start to be aware of their awareness, right? Like, hmm, how am I taking this in? Especially as we are spending more and more time, like imagine this is a cell phone, it's not, but when we're here all the time, right? In this very close, very near thing, what's happening to our eyes? Like if we just look up, take in the space around, more than just our eyes, but take it into our bodies as well. Like, cause you could look up and feel into the space or you could lift your head, close your eyes, feel into the space. Sense into the space. So it could be hearing, smell, but like, okay, I'm coming out of this into all of this. Can I do that in both my focus and awareness and into my body as well? All right, so there's that. Let's go with sagittal too. So our forward and backward, just moving forward and backward in any way. And you can just do this leaning in, leaning away. Doesn't have to be, you could do it with both hands. You could do it with one hand. You could do it with different body parts, right? Foot, reaching forward and backward. Yeah, so this is a great one. If you teach movement and you're trying to teach people the balance, if they're going off center, it's gonna be really hard. If they learn how to really be in, the sagittal forward, backward with their leg going forward, backward, a lot easier to balance. If my leg goes off, it's gonna throw me off. Yeah, so why do I wanna know what my sagittal is? Because then I can find center, find midline and balance a lot easier. So with sagittal, the effort is quick time going back, sustained time coming forward. And the way is like, you can go forward and go yuck, ew. Oh, that's disgusting. So you back up really fast. Hmm, let me check this thing out. Hmm, what is that? Let me just come in slowly. Ah, it's disgusting. I'm gonna back up. That's my that's my analogy for for why why we go forward, sustain, and quickly back. I'm the opposite in my life. I dive right in, and then I go, oh, I gotta get out of this thing now. So right, we have our different ways of being in the world. Yeah, I'm like, yes, I can do that. Oh, mm, maybe I can't. So I'm doing the disaffinity. Like maybe that was a bad idea. Anyway, so that is a, a little bit of how those things, that's a little how effort fits with space. And, and the effort quality is like with, with, with time effort, sustained time, quick time, it's not slow and fast. It's slowing down and speeding up. So it's like just a little flash, like, oh, something changed. And, and you know, there's certain dance forms. Jose Limon, he's got a lot of suspension, swing, suspension, swing. When we have that suspension, <sighs> it's like moving forward and backward. We can do this in the sagittal pl uh, plane and really feel it. So you can watch us, Terry, but we're just gonna go forward and then up and then back and down and feel what happens. Like there's a suspension, it speeds up, suspension, whoo, speeds up, suspended, speeds up. Like, so it's not that this is the forward and backward, but just feeling how time is related to that. Like I'm going down faster up, then falling back and slowing down and speeding up. 
suspension falling back. Like we can just find that how it like, before the wheel goes back again, it slows down. Like we find that suspension. In some ways, this could be also really related to breathing, like inhale, suspension at the top, and then exhale, suspension at the bottom. Inhale, suspension at the top, exhale, suspension at the bottom. So when we have those changes, it's not just like inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It's inhale, exhale, inhale. Yeah, so there's that sense of time. Awesome, yeah. Let's, um, let's now move thy costahedron since, since then we can figure out what's, which foot is crossing front or back. So I'm gonna face the other direction. And Terry, you can do this from your chair and you can do it really small. So you don't wanna, yeah, just make it, yeah, in your head, but you won't have to decode right and left because I'm gonna do it with my right and left. So I'm gonna go in the vertical plane, high right, crossing down to back low, taking it across the front, left forward middle, low right to back high, right forward middle, low left, forward high, right back middle, high left. So yeah, I've crossed back this time, forward low, left back middle to high right. So I think if I'm coming from the front, I usually cross front. If I'm coming from the back, I usually cross back in the uh, plane. So it's really depending where you're coming from more than where you're going to. <laughs> All right, so let's try it again on that side. High right, back low, left forward middle. Low right, back high, right forward middle. Low left, forward high, right back middle, high left, forward low, left back middle, high right. Starting the same thing on the other side. High left, back low, right forward middle, low left, back high, left forward middle, low right, forward high, left back middle, high right, forward low, right back middle, high left. Shake it out, we'll do it again on that side. Ha, ah, have a sip of water. Have a moment of independent thought. Mm. That's also a great, um, that have a moment of independent thought. I got that from one of my ballet teachers, Sarah Nice. She used to say it like, she'd be doing something. Okay, everybody have a moment of independent thought. She was hilarious. I use that a lot, especially if you're trying to figure out what to do next or whatever, give people a break. Have a moment to yourself. All right, let's do this side again. High left. Back low, right forward middle. Low left, back high, left forward middle. Low right, forward high, left back middle. High right, forward low, right back middle, high left. Okay, so I'm gonna, yeah, walk it while you got it. So I'm gonna throw one piece of thinking in there because we've done this central and peripheral. In this, in this uh, icosahedron, and just to give you the form again, because it's so helpful, especially for people who haven't taken a lot of this information, here's my icosahedron. This is the vertical plane, the door plane. This is the horizontal plane, the table plane. This is the sagittal plane. And each of them has four different corners. So the four corners of my vertical are these four. It's hard to show it. Four corners of my horizontal are these four and the four corners of my sagittal, these four, right? So if I'm here, yeah, it's so weird like to look at this thing. But if you get one and then you have time to kind of be like, oh, this is here, this is here, this is here, it, it's helpful. Um, 
there was something I was gonna say. Okay, so we talked about these uh, pathways of central pathway, peripheral pathway. In the icosahedron, what we're doing is moving through a transverse pathway. So a transverse pathway is not coming into center and it's not going around the edge. It's kind of like coming around, it's coming around. So there's this really three dimensional patterning going on with your torso as you're in it. So it's not like my torso stays in this squareness, maybe with just a little twisting, like what happens in the octahedron. But in this, we have this capacity. And we like to say that like a lot of these initiations, like I can initiate with my elbow and then maybe with my wrist and then again, elbow and then maybe fingers, right? So different parts of my body can initiate the movement as I'm kind of carving around through the space. So like, yeah, if I'm coming from my right forward, right high to back low, I'm going, I'm carving through this edge. I'm not going around the edge and I'm not coming into center. So that's just another way of thinking. And people in the Western world tend to be very central and peripheral, right? They don't tend to have a lot of this movement, which could be very transverse in their body. Like if you look at lots of forms of African dance and dances of the diaspora, like Brazilian dance or South American or even salsa and things, like there's all of this movement in here, right? There's, it can go forward, it can go back. There's this freedom in the whole torso that isn't, in Western ballet, Pilates, even yoga doesn't, I mean, you twist, but you're still very organized here. So it doesn't have that kind of freedom in, in movement. Anyway. I love that you brought it here, Laura, because that's how my, I've been craving moving the more embodied work I do. And so I hope we pick it up here. I have a hard stop today. I got it. That's cool. Right and I'm, uh, so I love yeah, that it is. so much. And also like, I know with the fixation, like the, the perf rods and cones, I try not to wear my glasses much because it's so fixated on one point, except when I drive, when I want to see yeah. something in detail. And so I just, I don't wear them a lot. Yeah. I don't, I don't see great, <laughs> but it's <laughs> like, I, I like to close my eyes and feel the space more than see it. Yeah. I, I know it's That's mean. awesome. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, all right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And Thank you, you, record, you recorded this. Yes, I recorded this and I will upload both of these this today. Definitely a place where I just went into scrambled brain. They can watch this. <laughs> a lot of information. It is. It's, it's, it. it's, it's wonderful though. It Thank you. Thank you. That's a good tip.